In this video, we're going to talk about the five types of chemical reactions. Now, you'll notice that on the screen, I've already written all five of them down for you. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video uh, and write each one. But when you write them, I want you to make sure that you write, number one, synthesis or combination, and then skip two lines between it because I'm going to add some examples. All right, we'll see you here in a minute. Pause it and come back when you're done. All right, let's talk through all five types of reactions. Then we're going to talk about some examples that you can fill in after each of them. Synthesis. Now, you'll notice that I put the word combination. Sometimes it's called a combination reaction or synthesis. To synthesize means to make. If you look at this generic reaction, A plus B yields AB, you're taking two parts and just putting them together, which means you're combining them. So the name is very logical. In the second reaction, it's called a decomposition reaction. Now, when something decomposes, it breaks down. And you'll notice that this reaction, you start with one thing, and then you break it into its two parts. The first and second reactions here are opposites of one another. You take two singles and combine to make something bigger. Or in a decomposition reaction, you break a big substance down, you split it in half into its two parts. So they then break apart. The third reaction is called a single replacement. Now, sometimes you'll see it as single displacement, but a lot of times single replacement, same thing. And this one's a little tricky. And so I'm going to teach this one in a really different way. Single replacement. Here's how I want you to imagine. Imagine you're at a school dance, and uh, you have a boy and a girl that are dancing. In a single replacement, the boy and the girl are dancing, and then another song comes on, and this boy wants to dance with the girl and so basically what happens is they're dancing now and this boy is all alone so notice it's boy girl dancing and then this boy uh, it, on the next dance is going to dance with the girl and that boy is waiting he can dance with someone else now um, you can look at like this or if you like a little bit more chemistry to it this is a positive and this is a negative off the chart and this is a positive when you put these together, the positives will switch places with one another, called replacing each other. They replace each other, so this plus is a magnet and attracts that negative, so that's why they go together, and then B is all alone. Now, sometimes students get messed up because they will try to put A and B together, but it's magnets. And in magnets, that's not how it works. For a magnet to work, let me grab this example of a magnet, you have to have opposites. So in this case, you can see here's a positive and a negative, and they're attracted to one another. Okay, there it is. And they are attracted to one another. Okay? And so they have to be opposite charges in order to attract. And so that's going to be real important when you do that one. So in this case, you end up with a plus and a minus together. In a double replacement, it's boy-girl. teach it the same way again. And boy-girl. And so they're all friends, and so what's happening is boy, girl, boy, girl, next song, this boy dances with that girl. And that boy dances with that girl. Now, it's a little confusing to students sometimes that I write it like this, but this is the correct order. Compounds are always written plus, minus, plus, minus. So you understand the boy, girl, boy, girl. Let me go back to the plus, minus thing. It's the same explanation, but a little bit more chemistry to it from charges on the chart. Plus is going to be with minus. That's why it's AD. It's not DA. Pluses are always written first. And then it's CB. That's the correct order here. Why? Plus, minus. So it's boy, girl, boy, girl. Now, it doesn't matter if you would have written CB plus AD. It doesn't matter which order you write the compounds. But it, inside the compound, it has to be plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, so these two are really close to one another. In a single replacement, it's a dancing couple, and then a guy wants to dance with a girl. In this one, it's two dancing couples, and so uh, because of charges, you get boy, girl, boy, girl on the other side. That was pretty easy. Combustion is completely different from all of the others. This part sometimes confuses people, so let me explain, but let me say this first. In a combustion reaction, this part's always the same. To combust means to burn. Okay, When you start your car, there's a combustion reaction that burns gasoline. Gasoline 
has one of its products to be, or one of the things in gasoline is C8H18 called octane. Now look how this matches what's in the box. C to the X, H to the Y, which means C to some number, H to another number, there they are, plus oxygen. Well, for something to burn, a fire must have oxygen every time. So every time in a combustion reaction, you're always going to have oxygen. When it finishes burning, or while it's burning, you're going to be giving off carbon dioxide and water. Now you may be thinking, okay, when I turn on my car, I know it has to have oxygen coming in. Carbon dioxide is one of the things that comes out of the tailpipe but we don't ever see water. Now if you think about it on a really cold day, sometimes when you pull up behind somebody on a, at a stop sign on a cold day, you'll see liquid dripping out of the gas tank. And some students have told me that's gasoline. Well, hopefully it's not gasoline or your car's not working right. It's really water. And that water drips out because it's a cool day. Most times, uh, this water comes out as steam. Now, you and I are a combustion reaction also. Carbohydrates, fats, proteins, lipids, all have these carbon and hydrogen things in them. And we burn our food. We breathe in oxygen, and we breathe out carbon dioxide. So we're just like an engine. So we eat our foods, we breathe in oxygen. It helps break those foods down into carbon dioxide, which we breathe out about every four or five seconds. And then we produce water. Our body, we sweat. We produce water, and our body gets rid of all that extra water all the time. So there's some real life examples of those. Now what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to walk through each reaction and give you an example so you can write it down. So let's start with single, excuse me, let's start with synthesis. Here is a very simple synthesis reaction. Let's say we take Na plus Cl2 and you'll notice that's a single thing and that's a single thing. Now this one is what is called a diatomic element. A diatomic element. And a diatomic element is something that is in pairs when it's found by itself. Now they're mostly gases, so I'm going to give you a quick hint. There are seven diatomic elements. Okay, if you've not learned this, here's the trick. Here they are, right there. You'll notice they make a seven, and they start with number seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. The other one's right there. There's all seven of them, so hydrogen is one of them. Make sure I get the right angle so you can see that. There's all seven of them. Okay? They are in pairs when they're by themselves. So it's sort of like twins. Now, you'll notice in this reaction, Na is right there. Is it a diatomic? Nope, it's not one of the seven. So diatomics, there are seven of them. You'll notice it makes a seven on the chart. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're all together. They're gases mostly. And then hydrogen's the seventh one. Okay, so we have a single and a pure element here. When it makes a synthesis reaction, it makes NaCl. Tricky, tricky. Be careful here. When you look at the chart, sodium is in the first column, which is plus one. And if you look at your periodic table, chlorine's right here, which is in the negative one column. They're supposed to equal zero. Plus one and minus one do equal zero, so that's the correct formula. That's a synthesis reaction. So what would you do if you had one like this? Mg with Cl2. This is also a synthesis reaction. It's a single and a single. That's all it is. You know that's a small little group. It's just two elements. You put them together. And then when you put them together, you have to check your charges. You have charges. Magnesium is right here, which is in the plus 2 column. So it's plus 2. Chlorine is in the negative 1 column. So there, plus 2 minus 1. In order for those to equal 0, I have to have two of those. So if I take those out, there's a correct formula. Tricky, tricky, watch this. Is this a 2 for the same reason this is a 2? The answer is no. This is a diatomic. It's one of those 7. This 2 came from charges when I had plus 2 and minus 1. You'll notice that 2 is not over here because this was plus 1 minus 1. The 2 wasn't needed. Okay? Those are synthesis reactions. Okay? What if you had a decomposition reaction? Okay? Decomposition. Okay? Here's an example of that. Mg3P2. Now you'll notice it's the only one that does not have a plus on this side. It's the only one. In a decomposition, you just cut it in half. Mg and P. That's all. 
Now, why don't I move the 3 and the 2? Well, the reason I don't move the 3 and the 2 is this 3 and the 2 were there because they were together. Are they together anymore? No, they're not. Are either one of these part of the 7 we just talked about? Mg is there and P is there. No, they're not, so we don't have to worry about the little 2. So, there's the formula. Now, you're going to learn in one of the others that, uh-oh, I have 3 magnesium here, so when I balance... That's how I do that, and 2 phosphorus means I need a 2 there. That's the correct balanced equation. And so if you don't know exactly how to do that, make sure you watch the video on balancing reactions. Here's one more. What if I took the one I originally had? Na, cut it from Cl. Now Cl is one of those 7, so I have to have the little 2. Have to have the little 2, because it's in pairs when it's by itself. That's not in pairs. So I have two chlorines, I need a 2 there, 2 sodium. There's my answer. Notice I take one thing and I'm splitting in half. That's all that's happening. Single replacement's the next one. In a single replacement, let's see if we can figure out what's happening. In a single replacement, you're going to take something like this, Mg plus NaCl. It's a single and a group. All you have to do is look at your chart and it tells you what to do. Na is plus one. So it's a plus. Chlorine is a minus one. We already looked at that, but it's right there. Magnesium is going to now try to dance with one of the two of them, and so magnesium is right there plus two. Well, it's simple to see. In a replacement, opposites attract. So what's going to happen is these guys switch places. So Mg is going to dance with Cl, and Na is all alone. That's all there is to it. Now, I wrote a formula, so I better check charges every time. Listen to that again. If you write a formula, you check the charges. Mg is a plus 2. Chlorine is a minus 1. Oh, this time it needs a 2. It didn't here, but it did here. Very good. I bet you got that one. Na is all alone. Don't have to worry charges. There's nobody to match charges with. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. Now correct the whole thing. Two chlorines means I need a big 2 here. I can't put the little 2, but I need the big 2 out front. So I have two chlorines by the distributive property. Now I have two sodiums, which means I need a two here. I have one Mg, one Mg, two Na's, two Na's, two Cl's, and two, other, two Cl's. There is the balanced reaction. Single replacement. As soon as you figure out plus and the plus, you just switch their places, make your two new partners, and you got it figured out. Let's try double replacement. In a double replacement, it works the same way. So if I had MgCl, 2 plus Na2O. It's a compound with a compound. So it's plus minus plus minus. Who are the partners? Well that makes it real easy. Mg is going to be with the other girl, which is the negative O. And the other plus, remember pluses go first, Na is going to be with Cl. I don't move any of the numbers. These numbers came from these partners. So these were partners needed to. These were partners needed to two. Are they with the same partners? No. Nope but I have to check. Mg is right there, plus 2. O is right there. Uh-oh, it's one of the seven. It's in pairs when it's by itself. Is it with it by itself? No. So I check my charges. It's in the negative 2 column, minus 2, plus 2, minus 2 equals 0, so I don't need a number. Na, plus 1. Cl, minus 1. So plus 1, minus 1. They already equal 0. Gone. Correct, correct, new correct, new correct. So I have new partners. So I have to check everything. Now I have two CLs, which means I need a two there. Gives me two NAs, and I already have two NAs. One MG and one MG. That's how you do a double replacement. Boy, girl, boy, girl. Switch partners. This boy is with that girl. Got it. This boy is with that girl. Got it. Now, if you wrote it like that, if you wrote the two, if you wrote two NACL plus MGO, that is still correct. You have the right partners. It doesn't matter which way you write them. You just have to have the right partners and the right numbers. The last one is combustion. Tricky, tricky. Watch very carefully. CH4 plus O2. It's carbon something, hydrogen something plus O2. That's automatically a giveaway. It's combustion. You always make this and you always make that. Let me say it again. When you have a carbon compound plus oxygen, it is burning. And so it's always going to make that and always going to make that. 
you don't even have to check your charges. It's always true, always true, always true. The only thing that's going to be different is what did you burn.